Hey, Kirk. We're live with Eric and V. How are you doing today? Hey, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you guys? It's been a couple of weeks since I last called. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, it, I, you have an interesting thing yeah. you want to talk about. Uh, do you want to present it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ. Cool. Um, so you, what about you want to know our take on it? Yeah, I wanted to know your guys' take on it. Like, you know, as I say that, what what do you guys think about that initial, like, statement? Like, as a, you know, hearing that, I mean, do you guys, would you guys agree, disagree? Well, I think a lot of that stems from my concept of belief in general. Like, take the Jesus part out of it and say literally anything else, gravity, fairies, you know, something that can be proven, something that can't be. I believe in certain things and I don't, I, I would have to break that apart and say, well, does my, this is a quantity of strength that I have influence my belief or does the quantity of reason that I have? I would say possibly reason, but not strength is my initial thought. Like, I, I'm not sure what strength would have to do with it. Um, but in terms of reason, reason has helped me determine which things are reasonable to believe and which are not. So it has influenced Um so I would say that, yes, by by my own reason, I could come to beliefs. Um, I would have to have more information on what strength meant in this context, though. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about I, you, Eric? I, sure. I, I think that it buys into a narrative that I, makes me cringe almost, like, makes me feel like I'm cringing out of my skin. <laughs> and it's this narrative of the the humbled before God being being on your knees i am weak he is strong i i am not enough you know and 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 it is by the grace of god that i am saved that whole idea i think is absolutely cringeworthy so i think v hit it right on the head let's take jesus christ out and replace it with literally uh, let's replace it with a government system maybe i cannot by my own reason or strength believe in capitalism democracy Ooh, that's Orwellian, isn't it? That's going to get clipped. Yeah, I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in democracy. That sounds like it's right out of 1984, doesn't it? That's doublespeak. Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned Orwell. I just started uh, listening to Animal Farm a couple of days ago. <laughs> okay, so 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 that whole concept of doublespeak, it, it, as you continue, you know, um, checking out Orwell, is is uh, in, in 1984 is damn good. Um, I think that when you say something like, I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in X, and there's also the implied, but I do, mm -hmm. or I should, that implication yeah. is not useful anywhere. And on top of that, the really, really, really terrible part of it is that it props up and, and makes people who do behave that way into heroes. Right. And, and, and so what, what you have is, and at least in my church, I, V, what about you? When, when you had somebody who behaved that way, I'm humbled before God, you know. It, yeah, they were usually the most full of themselves, just in my opinion, yeah, <laughs> in but, my but, experience. But they also walked around thinking that they were the most, um, that they were doing the best that they could, that they're admitting their weakness and, and handing it to Christ. Yeah. And it covered a multitude of sins. Um, but uh I guess I guess my question for you is why 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 this particular statement why why do you want to talk about this specifically? Well, I, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I'm a Lutheran, and it's kind of funny that call, me calling back two weeks later. Yesterday was our celebration of the Reformation, which is kind of ironic. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Uh, but uh, it's one of the – that particular statement is one of the chief, like, statements, you know, in, in you know, Luther's teachings for our church. Um, it's actually one of the first lines out of the uh, – out of his explanation of the uh, last part of the Apostles' Creed, you know, uh, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven, mm -hmm. like that creed. I, I'm assuming you guys sure. are – pretty familiar with that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, in thinking about that statement, you know, as it, as it is, you know, I think about the, you know, the obverse of it, which is, you know, I can, by my own reason and strength, reject Jesus Christ as Lord. 
So if well, I would, I would, I would reject. agree, but with a caveat. I would say the inverse of that is I can, by my own reason and strength, believe in Jesus Christ. Right? We don't need to add the rejection in there. We can say I can do this or I cannot do this. So would you say that you can or you cannot? Because as far as I'm concerned, if we're going to say, I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ, then I'm off the hook as an atheist. Because if I don't and I can't, then why bother trying to reconvert me, <laughs> right? So do you, do you believe that there is no, I'm assuming, no will involved in whether or not you believe? Well, it's it's interesting with the with the statement I cannot that you know there's there's people that you know interpret the like the cannot as you know like not a, as like I don't know like for an example you know if someone were to ask hey you want to run a marathon in a month and someone said and you're like oh, I cannot do that well technically you could if you got off your couch and stopped eating that bag of Doritos that looks so tempting in the corner but. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I'm, you literally, you, you you have the capacity to do that, and you, so, you you do have the capacity to run a marathon. But, what if I you know what, um, what if I told you that you cannot choose your beliefs at all? Cannot choose my beliefs at all. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. What what do you mean by that? I'm I'm a little confused. Sure. So um, when you're going out in the world and you're exploring it, you are using the best tools you have available to understand that world, right? So if you were to, um, <laughs> let's say you, ha you, bought a, you, you, you got a new puppy and you walked in and, and the living room was trashed. <laughs> um, odds are you're going to think, hey, the puppy did it, right? You're not going to immediately go, I knew it was leprechauns. <laughs> And well, no, of course, no, not. <laughs> and, but, but here's the thing. I think even if you tried as hard as you could, I think ultimately you can lie to yourself and you can distract yourself away from what you've, what you've accepted to be true. But when you believe a thing, you accept it to be true. You can't really talk yourself into it. You can talk yourself out of thinking about it. Sure. You can teach yourself to keep your brain busy so it so it stops you know feeling dissonant about weird ideas sure but you don't choose your beliefs you're at the mercy of your epistemology you are at the mercy of the tools that you have to decipher the universe around you and so i don't think you can choose to believe anything i think you can believe things using the best tools you have which is why this show continuously wants to promote those tools Okay. Okay. So would you say that I'm trying to figure out the best way to phrase this, I apologize. Um, That's okay. You're actively listening and responding and having a conversation that is actually building on things. It's amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, Other callers take a, take, take a notes. <laughs> this is good. Yeah. It's yeah. Not going to lie. The, I, no, no offense to the previous caller or anything, but I really couldn't understand what he was going for and what you know the how he was trying to construct things. It was a little confusing. And well, he's basing his beliefs on Jordan Peterson, so that's to be expected. Well, and, and, and there's also some Deepak Chopra, you know, kind of sprinkled in there. Yeah. Um, so though, like, I'm I'm curious. So would you say that based on Eric's interpretation of whether or not you can choose what you believe, does that seem to back up this claim that you cannot, by your own reason or strength, believe in X? Well, I see that, you know, when we do reason, when we do use reason or when people call on saying like, you know, hey, I got the this you know, reason to believe in God, and then they tell it to you, and you're like, well, that's not this because of this, because of this, this, and the other thing, and, mm -hmm. or like someone's, you know, using their feelings, for example, and saying that, you know, man, I walked outside, and, you know, it was a bright, sunshiny day, it was 80 degrees, unfortunately, in Wisconsin, we don't have that right now, but uh, <laughs> it was bright, sunny, sunny, 80 degrees out, and I just felt the warmth, therefore God loves me. Well, mm -hmm. you guys as atheists can walk outside, feel that heat, 
especially in Texas right now, which I envy you guys so much for being down there. Take it. Please take it. (laughs) We'll trade. (laughs) It gets old after a while. Um, But yeah, okay, so we're going off of epistemology and deciding how best to form these beliefs. Yeah, like you can't you can't believe based on your feelings and, you know, because your feelings always change. Like, for example, a couple of years ago, uh, when I was a senior in college, I thought God was, you know, calling me to be a pastor because I had a burning in the bosom. Well, mm-hmm. that burning in the bosom ended up being a, you know, semi-serious heart condition. That- <laughs> <laughs> you okay? Yeah. <laughs> It was totally not that. So, like, uh, so Kirk, I, I, I don't want to come off as a monster because I feel like in this platform we're going to come off as monsters if we don't say, "Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry that you had heart condition." Yes, <laughs> but also that was bu- brilliant delivery. Yeah, that was very well done. I, I, I also would have accepted indigestion, gas. <laughs> um. <laughs> so yeah, no, I, I think you're spot on with that. I think that using belief, using emotion to inform beliefs, will ensure that you're beliefs constantly change as your emotions do and that sets you up for some real cognitive dissonance and some real just exhausting uh mental acrobatics as you try and justify oh i feel this now all right what does that mean about for my beliefs and how i look at the world yeah yeah Mm -hmm. and like you get people that you know are in those touchy-feely situations in church where they're like you know they're on fire for jesus so to speak and the next day like their house burns down and it's like well how are you supposed to feel about that? How do you feel God after your house burns down? Like that's yeah. that's a pretty ridiculous foundation to base yourself in. And, Agreed. You know, so yeah. why do you believe? Yeah, that was going to be my question too. What do you base it in? So that that's that's the thing. You know, if I can't base it in my feelings, you know, mm-hmm. cause, you know, if shifting feelings is like shifting sand, you know, it's it's going to be either like a big dune or it's going to be like a deep valley, like after after you know some wind blows on it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when we when I see reason, and I see like you know, there's you know, people try to give different types of you know, like the teleological arguments or the you know, the first mover things like Aquinas and the mm-hmm. and, um other types of like random like random arguments that you know no matter how good or how bad they may sound like they all end up in the same way they all end up being disproven or or like they all fall apart in some way shape or form it's kind of like someone driving a ferrari up to you guys and being like man check out this argument you kick the tire and it just Bursts apart into flame, and, you know. <laughs> that is kind of how that feels on our end too. Sometimes, not going to lie. Yeah. All right. So we've we've dismissed uh, emotion as a valid way to know true things, right? And then we've dismissed maybe uh, certain apologetics or or philosophical arguments, at least the popular ones, so, as a way to know. So what, what else? What else have you got? It. Well, that that's the thing. This is where I'm going to sound sound out there like it 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 has to be like god doing this like it has to be some sort of god imputing faith to me otherwise like as as i've stated before all these other things just fall apart yeah those those do seem to be the options yeah and i think that you need to sit with that one Mm -hmm. because i don't think that that's going to sit well for someone like you for very long. Um, And that's okay. Yeah. It's not necessary, but at a certain point when you are full steam ahead on the God train, you know, it it, it takes a long time to turn. It takes a long time to stop. It takes a long time to evaluate those things, but it sounds like you're well on your way. I want to know where you go from here. Yeah. And honestly, you seem like somebody who is willing to like look at a thing logically and be like, okay, I'm going to pick this apart. And if it doesn't stand up to scrutiny, then I'm going to get rid of it and see what else I have to work with, which is an amazing way to approach things. My consideration for you to maybe take away and call back with, because I would love to talk to you again. I don't know about Eric. Yeah, absolutely. um, Would be 
isn't it kind of a circular argument to use God to prove God's existence? So if you're saying that you believe that God is real because God is real and has told you that, where does the falsifiability come into play? Because to me, that seems rather circular. Well, it, see, this is where I get, I get a little bit confused and everything and, um, and trying to explain this, and I apologize, I'm probably not going to explain it the best, but when, as I've said, when you take a look at reason, you know, every, all the reasons, like the, you know, these different types of reasons end up failing. I mean, we're batting, if we're using batting percentage, we're batting zero. Yeah, they're, they're pretty low. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty low. I mean, it's, it's non-existent type of a thing. <laughs> home runs out of this whole thing and when you use feelings there's no home runs out of that either i mean it's, it's so shifting that you know one day you're high as a kite the other day you're down in the valley and not really yeah. understanding what to uh what to what to believe and mm -hmm. yeah. you know it's i'm not going to base my faith on feelings or or if if it's based on reason that falls apart that doesn't that doesn't help at all and that's where it's like i'm kind of like you know, it seems as though when people try to reason, I mean, that's kind of pointing towards this thought of a lack of capacity that we that we lack capacity to believe by reason or strength. Can I ask you where else you you apply that logic in your life? So in other areas of my life, if I couldn't prove that something was true, I would just kind of let it go, right? If I if I was absolutely convinced that somebody was in love with me, right? And I was like, I feel it. I feel this person on, on the TV is in love with me. And then I was like, okay, well, I can't use my emotions. So maybe I'll use logic. And um, so then I try and logic my way into it. I was like, I can't do that either. And realistically, this doesn't seem like it's a thing. Okay, I'm just going to put that <laughs> aside for now. That's probably not accurate and move on with my life. So if we do that in other areas, why not do that with what I would assume would be the most important area and the one with the most uh, intense consequences, should you be right or wrong? Yeah, yeah, that's that. That is a great question. That's a great question. Um, the there there seems to be like a a difference between the you know in the, like throughout our lives we can just make a bunch of different choices like based on I mean you can you know decide like I'm going to eat a Twinkie today because mm -hmm. you know it feels good, it tastes delicious. I mean now granted it may not be very healthy and nutritious yeah. for you, but I mean everybody loves a nice twinkie especially when it's deep fried and from the state fair. But Damn it, Kirk, let, Kirk <laughs> let, <laughs> let's um I we we're, we're, we're starting to 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 drag on the call just a little bit. Um yeah, but, I, I apologize. Uh, no, that's no, okay. That that's what happens when you have fun in a conversation. You just want to continue, and that's what yeah. you normally do. Just the platform for the show is isn't the right one for it. Um, but you do seem like someone that I would love to sit down and have a beer with someday. Um, and there, in the meantime, stop by the Discord. I've got yeah. we've got lots of people in the chat who are like, I've been exactly where where Kirk is right now. We're both. I I, I yeah. know I'm sitting here like I've been exactly where Kirk is right yeah, now. Yeah. So if you want to talk with more people about this and just bounce ideas off of people, our Discord is a great place to go, and that link is a. Uh, in the lower third. Definitely. Thank you for calling in, man. Is it on the YouTube? Is it on the YouTube like page? Yeah. Right now, if or? you uh if you if you check out the video during your call, um, we will have the link to the to the ACA Discord in the lower third. That's also tiny.cc slash ACA Discord. Um, if you type that in, that's an invite and you get to you get to enter the chat rooms. Yeah. Okay. Um, um trying to find it but i can't seem to find it <laughs> no worries um uh, check out check out the uh the live chat as well they're they're yeah. dropping the link all right take care man awesome thank you take care thank bye you. uh someone in the live chat was also asking if uh how to reach out to us you can reach out to us uh by messaging mail at talkheathen.com um is that right no I, I think there might be a new one yeah mail at talkheathen.com um if you just 
put, you know, two Eric or two V or two crew or something like that, then we'll make sure. Right. It's and we also uh, have individual emails through the ACA. Uh, so if you want to talk to me about something, you can hit me up at V at atheist hyphen community dot org. And I'm Eric at atheist hyphen community dot org. Right. Yeah. But send it to mail at because I'd love to. I usually like talking that kind of stuff over with V. 